Okay, here we go, another video on the Germany topic that I've promised this week. I said it was going to be about Gustav Stresemann, the work of Gustav Stresemann. Uh, changed my mind, I thought I'd do a video about the Spartacus Uprising and the Cat Putsch, because obviously they're two very, very important events in um, the early years of the Weimar Republic, and I realise I haven't done a video on those either. Um, and obviously they... they um, predates Stresemann as well. So um, I'll do a video on, on these uh, two events today. Um, obviously the two of the key uprisings against the Weimar Republic that you need to know about, the third one obviously being the uh, Munich Putsch or the Beer Hall Putsch, however you want to call it. I will do a video on that topic, but I'll um, do that in the future when I'm doing more videos about the Nazis, because obviously it's a Nazi uprising which led by Adolf Hitler anyway. Um, so yeah, as I say, today's video is going to be all about the Spartacus Uprising and and the cap putch, as I say, two of the key uprisings against the Weimar Republic that you need to know about. Now, the first one is the Spartacus Uprising of January 1919. Now, this is a revolt that, if you remember, is led by a large majority of Germany's communists who call themselves the Spartacist League. And the Spartacist League... Uh, was led by two people called Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht. Now, what happens? Well, in January 1919, the Spartacus League um, decides to take advantage of something that's going on in Berlin. There are widespread workers' protests in Berlin. And the Spartacus League obviously spy an opportunity here. They go, well, the workers are already protesting. We can actually turn this into a huge, wide-scale um communist revolt or socialist revolt and overthrow the government and install a communist government just like um, what happened in, in Russia a couple of years before um, so the Spartacus League call for a workers uprising and a general strike and this is exactly what happens over a hundred thousand um, workers um, revolt or, or take to the streets and, and you know this uprising really does kind of gain gain traction and gain speed um, to the point where the Spartacus League actually managed to take control of the government newspaper and the telegraph offices. So they really do um, make quite a bit of protest early on in January 1919, where you know it looks like they're getting close to potentially overthrowing the Weimar Republic, or the Weimar government, I should say. Now, it's obviously a huge, huge problem for the, for the Weimar government. They don't really know what to do. Well, the, the first option is, as, as most governments would do, is go, right, well, we'll get, let's get the army out. Well, the problem that the Weimar government have got is that the army is incredibly weak because, remember, this is happening in January 1919. The First World War only ended in November 1918. So the army is in a very, very weak and almost frazzled state and isn't in a position to overthrow this uprising. So the government can't rely on the army because it's in no fit state to um, to deal with this revolt. So what they have to do is they turn to a group of people called the Fry Corps. And the Fry Corps, if you've forgotten what they are, you shouldn't have, but if you've forgotten what they are, uh, they are soldiers who had returned from, uh, from the war to Germany, but they hadn't given up their weapons. Um, so like a little people's army, if you will. Uh, so the government turns to the Fry Corps to overthrow the um, the Spartacus uprising, um, and and it works. The Fry Corps did manage to overthrow the the uprising, so, you know, get the workers off the streets, and they shot uh, Rosa Luxemburg and Karl Liebknecht um, and dealt with the the uprising um, successfully, so that the government wasn't overthrown in the end. Um, but it's important because we've, we've done this in lesson anyway, and it actually says this in the textbook, and it is true. Just because the Spartacist uprising failed, because, you know, they didn't overthrow the government, um, the threat of communism to the Weimar Republic uh, remained all the way through the whole Weimar Republic period up until 1933. Um, because the, commun the communism itself was very, very popular in Germany. Um, you know, the Communist Party of, of Germany was the biggest Communist Party in Europe outside of Russia, um, and they were regularly getting at least 10% of the uh, seats in the Reichstag. So communism, the threat of communism for the Weimar Republic did not go away just because the Spartacus uprising um, was, you know, overthrown and, and failed. Um, so that was a threat from the left, you know, the extreme left, okay? Um, what happened a year later, or in the next year anyway, in... in 1920, was well, she got a threat from the extreme right, the Cap 
Putsch of 1920, the first big threat to the Weimar Republic from the right. Okay, now it starts in March 1920 when Ebert uh, tried to disband or basically break up, close down, whatever word you want to use, two Freikorps units. Because um, again, the Freikorps, you know, you don't really want your citizens, you know, marching up and down the street in uniform with weaponry, etc. It's not great for um, for national security. So Ebert tried to break up or disband two of these Freikorps units. Uh, the Freikorps naturally didn't want to be disbanded. They didn't want to give up their weaponry, etc. Um, so they revolted against against Ebert and the Weimar Republic, um, and they declared Dr. Wolfgang Kapp who was an extreme nationalist, obviously on the right wing, um, their, or Germany, sorry, Germany's new leaders, they march on Berlin and they say, right, Dr. Wolfgang Kapp is the new leader of Germany. So I say an extreme nationalist, um, so therefore, you know, on, on the right. Um, now, the government, again, initially, turn to the army, the German army, and go, right, this needs dealing with, put it down. But the problem was... Many are most army leaders and soldiers themselves actually sympathised with the cap putsch and agreed with it. Um, so once again, for different reasons this time, once again, the German army couldn't be relied on to break up this uprising. So what um, Ebert and the Weimar government had to do was they had to appeal to the people of Berlin and encourage the people of Berlin to go on a general strike. Um, to put down the revolt, which the people of Berlin did. What happened was, it what, basically what it meant was that when the people of Berlin went on strike, um, essential supplies of gas, electricity, water, etc., um, were majorly disrupted, and therefore the city itself couldn't function properly. So when the the Freikorps and, and the Kapuch arrived in Berlin, um, Kapp very quickly realised that he didn't have the support that he needed to be the leader of Germany, because clearly the people of Berlin, or the majority of people of Berlin, the workers of Berlin anyway, have clearly, you know, rejected the the, the prospects of Kapp becoming the leader of Germany. Um, and therefore he realises he hasn't got the support he needs. Um, he flees to Sweden. Um, the fri And the government do return to Berlin. Ebert and the Weimar government do return to Berlin. Um, and the Freikorps are disbanded. So once again... It was an uprising against the government that did fail, you know, it didn't overthrow the government, although it got very, very close. Now, the both these revolts, both the Spartacist uprising and the Cat Putsch, I think show two or the reveal two very clear things about the Weimar Republic, the Weimar government. Number one, clearly it's not very popular because you've had an uprising from the left and an uprising from the right in the space of a year, yeah, between January 1919 and, and March 1920, just over a year, you've had two major uprisings that have got pretty close to overthrowing the government. So the Weimar government is not popular. You knew that already, really, from all the work we've done on the Treaty of Versailles and things like that. The Weimar government is not very popular, even early on. Um, and, you know, this obviously kind of paints a picture for, for the problems the Weimar government are going to, um, to have all the way through leading up until 1933. Um, and number two, in both cases, in both the Spartacus Uprising and the Cat Putsch, the government haven't been able to deal with the revolt themselves. Because, obviously, with the Spartacus Uprising, they've had to rely on the Fry Corps. And in the Cat Putsch, they've had to rely on the goodwill of the people. And they haven't been able to control their own military. If you don't control your own military... You don't really have much control of your own country because the military is obviously a, a really crucial part of running a country and being a crucial part of, uh, well, your security first and foremost. So if you don't have control of your own military and you can't rely on your own military, you're really, really going to struggle to control your country full stop. So both of these uprisings, revolts, whatever word you want to use, um, have shown that the, the Weimar government is both unpopular and doesn't have complete control of the country of Germany. Um, so they are important events that you do need to know about. Even though they both fail, and obviously the, the beer hall putsch fails as well, um, but even though they both fail, you know, they do, first and foremost, 
signpost just how unpopular and how weak this Weimar government is. You know, clearly, by March 1920, it's very, very obvious just how weak this Weimar government is. Um, and there are other reasons that contribute to that weakness as well that, that you should know about already. Um, right, so that's the Spartacus Uprising and the Cat Putsch covered in 10 minutes, not too bad. Um, as I say, I will do another video on the third putsch. Remember, putsch is the German word for uprising. Probably should have said that earlier on. Um, or armed uprising, anyway. Uh, I will do a video on the Munich putsch or the Beer Hall putsch um, in the future when I do some more videos covering um, the Nazis, the rise of the Nazis, etc. Um, I will uh, go ahead and make a video, or maybe even two videos, about the work of Gustav Stresemann, because, again, a really, really crucial um point of the or, or a crucial um, feature of the, the the course that you need to know about uh, that will hopefully come in the next week or so once again i'll leave the comment section open if you have any, any requests for germany videos civil rights videos first world war videos please leave your suggestions down there and i'll get to work on those as soon as possible if i'm able to um but as per usual Hope the revision is going well and hope half term is going well that you're having a good break at the same time. Uh, take care of yourselves. I will see you all very soon and keep your eyes open for some more Germany videos coming in the next couple of weeks. Thank you very much.